Welcome to an episode of Horror Tales Around the Net. Today's story, Meta Man M, Passcode of Horror. It all started not too long ago. It was storming outside and very dark, which is my favorite type of weather. I was enjoying a good game of Mega Man X for my SNES emulator, and finally managed to beat it. It was a moment I would never forget. As the dialogue and cutscenes rolled by, lightning struck, and the power cut out right then it said, Is the war with humans close to an end? The end. Only the ex-buster on his arm knows for sure. It made me realize I, that I had to fight Sigma and his dog all over again. I had the passcode for getting back to where I was, because my save states were corrupted from the power outage and I don't have and I don't save state during boss battles. Upon putting all the numbers in, I heard a beep sound. The sound you hear when it is a invalid code. Yet it went on as if it was a valid one. Why did it beep like that? I disregarded that and continued on. But instead of loading up the stage selection screen, the intro stage started up. <laughs> At that point I realized I, I lost all of my data. So, I tried again. I tried the code again several other times, but the intro stage kept coming up. While starting it up, I noticed that it was a little different from the usual. Instead of X being blue and cyan, he was more of a dark green and grass green color. The light on his head wasn't red, but a gold yellow color. I started playing, and everyone seemed, or everything seemed normal. The spikes roller rolled at you, and the flying dudes destroyed parts of the road. But the sky was a bit different. It was a dark and cloudy thunder. It was dark and cloudy with a thunder effect, much like the weather outside. I continued playing, but when I shot my weapon, he didn't fire the usual X3 or three X busters. Instead, two normal flying rockets were shot, which apparently did two times more damage than the X buster. It was kind of cool to have a weapon like that. I continued through the level, and nothing was changed until I got to the end. At the end, I saw X Zero and Vile along with Storm Eagle's ship. So if I wasn't playing as X, then who was I? The dialogue box came up, and all of them spoke. X said, There he is! Zero said, We have you now! Vile said, Yeah! <laughs> There's no escape. With Sigma gone, we aren't going to let Mavericks like you start another war. Vile made me wonder something. He said Sigma was gone, and why is X Zero Zero spelled wrong and Vile there. If Sigma is defeated, then Zero should be broken and Vile should be dead too. <laughs> but they they were right there. I realized that earlier I had defeated Sigma. I thought the lightning could have corrupted my data, which is a high possibility, but I find it strange that the game was changed in such a strange way. Anyway, after they said their stuff, the battle song started. But it sounded deeper, slower, and full of static. It gave me a eerie feeling. But what was even weirder is all of their attacks bounced off of me like they do shields, or do two shields. After a few seconds I fired a missile, but strangely it exploded in mid-flight and split into three other missiles that homed in and hit all three of the guys. The screen flashed like when you destroyed Val's riot armor, but soon it faded away and something strange happened. Zero wasn't blown in half, X was froze in a dead pose, and Val was exploding causing a red fluid to splatter everywhere. It was transmission fluid. Then a dialogue box appears and says, You fools! The war has just started and I'll show you by slaughtering thousands of humans and reploids. Hear me now. My name is Meta. Remember that name. <laughs> After that, his eyes were glowing red, and he beamed up into the sky, which normally means that you beat the level. Then I was at the stage selection screen, but it made me not want to pick any stage. All of the eyes of the bosses were missing, and the music sounded broken and full of static. The map looked different too. The sky was red, and so was the ocean, though most of the boss stats were the same except for the weapon analysis. Under the weapons section it said, Deceased, which was very strange. I chose Chill Penguin first, 
because it's what you're supposed to do. The intro fanfare come in, and Chill Penguin did too with his pose, but it really disturbed me to see that he had no eyes. It stayed on that frame for 20 seconds, and I was unable to skip it. Luckily, the level started up, but it was snowing and the sky was cloudy and dark red. As I proceeded through the level, some of the enemies weren't there. Instead, there was snow-covered piles of scrap metal with red oil leaking from them. While it was frozen some others, I continued through the level and the bat bots were still there, so that didn't change. I got up to the part with the capsule. It appeared to be used already. Probably left over for when X got it. When I stepped in it, loud static st sound starts blazing from my headphones while getting the leg parts. I ended up getting the dash boots, at least I think I did. Instead of dashing, I just moved faster, which was still pretty convenient. <laughs> I then went on and decided to take the shortcut involving the ride armor, which turned out to be a bad idea. I got to the, up to the top and found a disturbing sight. There were reploids littered all over the place, all covered in red oil. Most of them were too damaged to identify what enemy it was. While walking through the horror, Metal walked slower, and his eyes glowed red again, as if he was pleased by seeing all that. As I went higher up the mountain, the sky got darker, and it snowed a lot harder. Eventually, I made it to Chill Penguin's doorstep. I proceeded into the room. It was a dark red room, and the battle music was creepy. I fought him for about a minute, and after every hit Chill took, he would look more and more heavily damaged until he started dripping red oil everywhere. I could tell that he was suffering greatly, yet I just had to kill him. Eventually, the final shot killed him, causing the, him to explode, releasing the red oil everywhere, and the victory song played, but it was in a demonic tone. He laughed maniacally and beamed up. Soon I obtained shotgun ice, but it was dark blue and the weapon didn't change Meta's color. He remained green. Then it was back to the title screen, but Chill Penguin's picture had changed. His face was all red, stained with lots of dents and scorch marks. So I guess that means he's dead. Next I chose Storm Eagle. After picking him, I landed in his stage, and the sky was its common dark red, but thunder was roaring. There was no music and no enemies to be seen. The platforms didn't even work, but I was still able to get around by wall jumping from platform to platform. While moving through the level, I found the enemies, but they were all dead. I eventually came across the capsule, and it too looked like it was used already. I went inside and ignored the static sounds while getting the helmet. Finally, I got it, and it did the same thing as the original Destroy Blocks. Though it also did something else interesting. Any normal enemy I would come across would avoid me as much as possible. Some even jumped down to their death. Why were they doing this? Was it because of the helmet? I don't know. Later, I got the Storm Eagle ship. Bit, it was halfway destroyed, but still functional. Storm Eagle came down, and the thunder got louder, and lightning even struck. After looking at Storm Eagle, he wasn't the nice caring leader anymore. Some of his feathers were missing and he had red oil dripping from his wings. The battle began and he went at it, but strangely his attacks were barely doing any damage. After he got too low damage, his wings fell off and after a moment he died. I actually shed a tear from witnessing that. Poor Storm Eagle. After he died, the victory theme played at its usual demonic tone. Did his maniac laugh and then beamed up, and then beamed up. I had obtained Storm Tornado, but whenever it was shot, thunder can be heard. This weapon didn't change meta color, meta, uh, this weapon didn't change meta color either. Back to the dreaded stage selection screen for me. After returning to it, Storm Eagle's face changed too, but his face was dripping with red oil, and his beak was missing. Next I chose to go up against Flame Mammoth, because I had his weakness. I had arrived on his stage, and as expected, it was frozen over from defeating Chill Penguin first. Also, the conveyor belts were working, and this place too looked lifeless. But to my surprise, the tunnels were still dropping junk, but it was only it was oily red reploids. 
I proceeded through the stage, but to me it looked like it had a accident because some bits of the stage was missing. Eventually I came across the arm part capsule and went inside it to get the arm cannon, but when I did, nothing happened. Upon close inspection, it seemed that Meta already had the arm cannon. Where and even when did I get it? I probably got it from Zero X when I defeated them. While going through the stage, things got very glitchy and buggy, especially the pipe art. Lava was everywhere and even dripping from random places. I quickly got past that and made it to Flame Mammoth, but a dialogue box appeared. It said, The apocalypse has begun. After that, his trunk fell off, and the place where it was, was oozing red oil. No music was playing, and one storm tornado was enough to kill him. The tornado ripped him apart, and all there was left was a big pile of metal red and red oil. The sound of the tornado was very loud, and it made me jump. After killing him, the background started exploding like, you, like after you defeat Sigma. Meta laughed maniacally and then beamed up. After defeating him, I got Fire Wave, and, tr and to my surprise, it turned me red. Why, why this power-up did it and not others? Anyway, I returned to the stage selection screen. Flame Mammoth's pick had changed, his trunk was missing, and red oil was coming out of that spot. Also, I couldn't re-enter his stage, like it wouldn't let me. My next target was Spark Mandrel. When I arrived on his stage, I seen the crashed ship that was, that's supposed to be there, along with lots of glass and scrap metal. When I walked away from the ship, the lightning or the lighting went out. Even though I ventured deeper into the stage, the darkness didn't go away. It was so dark that I really had, that I had to get really close to the screen just to see the ground. The music was weird too. This level was really starting to creep me out. I could barely see what lies ahead. Something could pop out and kill me easily. I continued very slowly, and all of a sudden, the sounds of enemies could be heard. That's where I lost it. I started to fire my weapon everywhere, but strangely, I wasn't taking any damage. Only the sounds were playing, but there weren't any enemies around. Eventually, I got to the mini-boss room, but there was no sign of him. The lights had suddenly came on, and I seen him, and the stuff that I didn't want to see. The ground was drenched in red oil and littered with dead reploids. On the ceiling was the mini boss. Instead of him having the usual gooey blue water, he had red oil with reploid arms and legs floating in it. That crossed the line. There's no way corrupted data could read like this, but I found a legit reason for it. Maybe my computer was reading two ROMs, and the, the corrupt one and another one on the internet, because the original is too messed up to read, so it decided to try to find another, a different one to read. But then the question popped up, who would make something like this? It kind of explains the glitching and background horrors. Anyway, the battle had started and I easily defeated him by using the storm tornado. After I killed him, the lights went out again. Ugh, I hated the darkness. But suddenly I started taking damage. What the heck is going on here? That's when I remembered that the ground was covered in dead reploids. Dead ones, not alive ones. The th the 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 though of them coming to life and attacking me was too creepy, so I quickly got out of the room. Finally, I made it to the boss. I entered the two doors and confronted Spark Mandrel. The lights came, came back one, and I seen him, but the battle music didn't play, nor did he move. That made me a little curious, but eventually it came to my mind that he was dead. But how could he be dead? I never attacked him. He just stood there, lifeless. But I got a thought. All of the stages I'd been to looked as if someone had already been there. Meta is at war with the humans and Reploids, right? Well, maybe he's not the only one. Maybe he has comrades that are helping him. Or maybe he's here to finish what someone has started. Staying there didn't give me any answers, so I shot my shotgun ice at him and he exploded because he was already dead. The evil victory theme played. Meta did his laugh and then beamed up. The weapon I got was, of course, Electric Spark. And it was as normal as can be. But Meta's color still didn't change. After that, I was back at the stage selection screen. But I was surprised. Sparks Mandrel's face wasn't even there. It was just a blank screen. Next up is Armored Armadillo. He was one of my favorite bosses and the stage had awesome music. But I know that he will be corrupted in some way. I arrived to his stage, but it was a little dark and his music was no longer fun. It was creepy and dark. 
The minecart wasn't there either, but strangely the bats were still there and went on to attack me. This underground tunnel just gave me the creeps. Even the spikes had red oil on them. The deeper I got, the darker it became. The rock busting bots were just old rusted up metal with red oil on the spikes. I kept going even though I didn't want to, and I made it up to the part where you're supposed to ride the minecart to get over the cliff to get to the boss, but it wasn't there. I was thinking, now how am I supposed to finish this level? I wasn't going anywhere, just standing there, so I went on. But as I was holding the right button, Meta started running. He was running so fast that it was the same speed as the minecart, but the track was different. For once, there was a cool moment in this dark tunnel, but it had changed quick. His eyes glowed red again, and by now I know what that means. There were enemies on the track, and one by one they got rained into and splattered their red oil everywhere. There was deep static, and the screen was getting darker red. I was like, no, 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 no. But I held down the right button, and I hit the ramp to fly skyward. The waterfalls and water were blood red, which didn't surprise me. Finally, I went through the doors and confronted armor. This shields were cracked and nearly broken while his armor was full of dent marks and blast holes. The battle music started up and actually it was the original theme, no corrupted version. The battle started and everything went out normally, but when his life got low all hell broke loose. Each hit would knock off a piece of him until he only had a head and a torso. He didn't explode, no, no. He stayed looking like that, his red oil pulled upon the ground. All Meta did was laugh at the sight of him, which actually made me very angry. Then he beamed up. I got the awesome rolling shield, and it did exactly what I usually does. But it didn't change Etta's color, which didn't surprise me at this point. His face changed too, like the others. It showed a robotic skull with bolts of lightning charging from it. That leaves just three Mavericks to defeat. I chose to go up against Launch Octopus because I had his weakness, which was the Rolling Shield. Upon arriving to the stage, it looked just as I expected. The water was a blood red color and the sky was very dark. It was also raining and the rain even damaged me so I quickly ran towards the water and jumped in. It was strange because I moved sort of slow and his jump was even slow, but that proved to be quite useful. It was kind of hard to see through the waters, luckily there wasn't any enemies to be seen. While going through the level, those submarine mini-boss mini -boss guys were still there and acted normal. Soon enough, I made it to the ship which you're supposed to destroy to get the Turbo Heart, but it wasn't there and neither was the hatch. I jumped down to get the Turbo Heart, but it was too thick for me to see, so I abandoned the idea. Nearing the boss, I encountered the Wormfish dude, but, that he, but he had spikes all over his body, so I couldn't ride it while shooting it. Almost all my weapons had no effect on him, so I decided to stop playing around with him and charge up my primary missile weapon. Then I fired it, but there was a very loud static boom which caused me to flinch. When I looked back at the screen, only bits of him remained. I had no idea I was able to do that. Finally I made it to the boss door, but all around me was dead reploid sunk to the bottom of the, around his entrance. Ugh. I knew something awful was lurking behind that door. Or, sorry. Ugh. I knew something awful was lurking being that door, so I went through it and confronted Launch Octopus, but he was feeding off something. I looked like one of those robotic fish. Then the battle started. The only attack he did was the whirlpool suction thing. I looked closely and seen that he didn't have missile racks, only two extra tentacles. The battle wasn't hard, but it took a auto of my time. Eventually, I defeated him. Instead of laughing, a, I'm sorry. Instead of laughing, a text box appeared, and Meta said, "I wonder how Brother is doing." After that, he beamed up. I was disappointed by the fact that I didn't obtain a new weapon from him. It was back to the Sage Select screen, and unsurprisingly, Launch Octopus's face changed. His face was all dented up, and half of it was missing. Next, I was going to go up against Boomer Quanger, but his picture stunned me. His eyes were glowing red, just as Meta's would. I selected him, but instead of going through his intro and starting at the start of the stage, I started, I started in the boss room and the conversation started. 
Boomer said, the sky has gotten dark. Was this your doing? Meta said, yes, brother. Everything is going as planned. Boomer said, did you manage to finish off the remaining enemies? Meta said, indeed, they are all destroyed. When I heard this, my mind was like blown. So all the corpses, all the destruction, and all the half-beaten bosses were his doing? No way. The conversation continued. Boomer said, good work. Now only one enemy remains, and that is Sting Chameleon. I'll come along and assist you in this final attack. Meta said, very well. With him out of the way, we, will, we can ensure the total annihilation of Reploids and humans. After that, Meta beamed up. Finally, it was time to defeat the last boss. I picked him and watched his intro, but he looked scared and terrified as if he knew I was coming for him. It made me feel sad at first. I then started on his stage, but it was a horrible sight. The trees were on fire and had numerous claw marks on them. I seen the enemies, but they were being attacked by guys that apparently were my comrades. Everywhere I went, the enemy was being destroyed. I made it to the part with the big robot that guards the armor, but he wasn't there and neither was the capsule. Anyway, I continued through the firefight and made it to the part where you're supposed to use the ride armor to get to the boss, but the ride armor wasn't there. That didn't stop me, so I went on and every ride armor guy I encountered, one of my comrades in a ride armor, a ride armor would appear to protect me. It was cool, yet creepy. Finally, I made it to the end and went through the boss doors, and there Sting was. The battle had started and none of my attacks were damaging him. Then I realized that I might have his weakness, so I went to the pause menu to select Boomerang Cutter, but it wasn't there. Instead, it said Boomer Kwanger. I selected that and unpaused. When I did, the meta sprite was replaced by Boomer Kwanger, and a text box appeared that said, Your end is at hand. Sting said, Nye, nye, ha. I don't think so. I ain't scared of you. After that, Boomer Kwanger engaged Sting, but I wasn't able to control him, so I just watched. Boomer would throw his boomerang cutter to no sting. Wait, what? Boomer would throw his boomerang cutter to no sting down and then throw him into the ceiling. Red oil would splatter everywhere every time he would do that. Eventually, Sting gave up and died. Afterwards, the victory theme played, but it was backwards and very demonic. Meta's sprite came back and he beamed up. I didn't get a new weapon, and I wasn't loaded back to the stage selection screen. I appeared in that scene that would usually be Zero and X, but instead it was Meta and Boomer Quanger. The conversation started, and Boomer said, Finally, now no one stands in our way. Meta said, now we can proceed with our plans. Humanity and Reploids will finally come to a end. Boomer said, the time has come. Let's get to it. After that, they both turned and looked at the screen. They stared at me for five seconds when a error message popped up and said, SNES 9X has encountered a problem and needs to close. We are sorry for the inconvenience. Seconds later, the emulator closed itself out. I sat there wondering what happened. I tried loading the ROM back up, but it wouldn't work because it was corrupt. After many other tries, I closed out the emulator entirely. Then I looked at my desktop background, and it wasn't what it used to be. It was the stage selection screen of the game before I defeated all the bosses. Ever since then, I never thought of Mega Man X the same way again, and realized that for every good side, there is a dark and evil side. Someday you will come to no fear, just as I have. Face me, and you shall surely perish. Signed, Meta, the Cosmic Destroyer. Thank you for tuning in to Horror Tales Around the Net. Tune in next time for another horrifying story. The apocalypse has begun. After that, his trunk fell off. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> the apocalypse has begun. X explodes. I right, sorry. Sting said, "Nye nye ha." I don't think so. I ain't scared of you. After that, Boomer. <laughs> I.
Uh, uh, I ain't scared of you. Eventually, Sting gave up and died. <laughs> <laughs> I give up. I give up. Explode. 